Well, everybody, it is time for our spring cleanup work. And today we are taking care of a problem, a mess that should have never happened. Many years ago, before we did hay, we were doing uh, grain and trying to store grain in uh, like a berm or a bunker that he made here. And that bunker became a garbage pile over time. And I don't know why, <laughs> but truckloads of shingles were brought here. He had figured he would just burn them at one point or bury them. We have holes that were dug um, in this land from the previous owners for many years and a lot of backfilling in those holes with junk occurred over time. We decided we didn't want to bury them. We want to um, get rid of them. So he's made a big incinerator and up on top of this hill, uh, this is where the motorcycle jumps were and everything. So all that motocross stuff is done and it's becoming an extension to this beautiful hay field. So it is so beautiful. The nature, uh, the animals, they love it. The geese have wandered off over this hill. They're kind of right down in there. And we saw them over in the east field the other day. As beautiful as this is, this is not. All of our farms, uh, billboard tarps that we've used over the years for hay uh, covering, grain covering uh, of big trailers like grain hoppers, have ended up out here over time and the berm that was here to store grain in was also lined. We took out uh, about seven tarps I think and this is all the plywood and shingles from a roofing job. And we decided it needs to go. We did not realize because when you own it, you tend to get blind to it. Two or two and a half years of this sitting here. So I think it's two and a half years. Well, huh, it would have been a lot easier just to run a dumpster, I know. But we generally take care of things on our own for the frugality of it and, um, being able to, you know, the idea of filling in holes, whatnot. Now, Trey and his dad have moved a lot of dirt through here um, to even this land out and spreading the manure out here. There was a lot of years of spreading manure here before. So we're right at the edge of the hay field. We have uh, clover and alfalfa, not much clover, just little. It starts to die off over years. That seed goes through the cow's stomachs, ruminating animals, and it all comes back out the back end. So in this area here, it's very gravelly. We'd like to smooth it out some more and have this be an extension of the hay field. So our lane goes right here into the woods and it really needs to be shifted up closer to the ridge. And I mean, you could just plant on both sides of it. It's no big deal, but it's pretty sandy up in there. So real easy to just shift that. Quite a slope here. And in the end, it's a great spot for sledding in the winter time. But just look at how all this looks, all green and beautiful. We're at the last week of April. And if you can see far, far over, we have brown, dirt, farmers that are doing rotational crops are trying to get that done. We've already had yesterday of rain, today's gonna rain again, and we're gonna have three more days of rain. And we already have this beautiful sod base. In areas, some of the hay is already nine to 12 inches high. So in the end, this is going to be their sledding hill and additional hay field. I would say, it's at least another five acres that we've been reclaiming over the years doing this. And we've been going along trimming um, the woods edge that grows out onto the hay field. So why not use it? thing about nature I've never liked is snakes. This is a good sized rattlesnake. I was cleaning up around the edge of the pile right here and it was sticking out of the pile and it had drawn its head and upper body back to strike. And I was a good three feet away, 
so he was just waiting for me to get a little bit closer. So I've severed him in half mostly. That sucker with a flat shovel and dirt, he's not even broke through or dead yet. I probably hit him six or seven times and just kept trying to force that shovel through him. So if you love snakes, I'm sorry about that, but there is no room for rattlesnakes on this farm or around my kids. That's him all laid out. That's easy three feet. I'll be being a bit more careful. I just told the kids about a week and a half ago we had 80 degree weather and they saw some snakes on some rocks. You always see the turtles this time of year. And I said, don't go off into the creeks or the woods or around the rocks without a grown up. He had a nice warm spot to sun himself on these shingles. It didn't seem like this big of a job from the beginning of the whole project. And it's something we've been working on a little bit all week. But the benefit of having this gone, we have pulled out loads by the tens. I don't even know. He's probably over 20 loads out of here. And you're only getting half a bucket at a time, so it's slow. And I'm going around the edge and cleaning it all up. Hopefully there's no more snakes in there because we're down to like the pile of dirt at this point. After we kill that snake, he's trying to grab stuff by hand and throw it in there barehanded. Of course, I wear gloves for everything, so I'm like, mm, you better not do that. But just look how much greener and nicer this is than even a year ago, just with having a little bit of clover and alfalfa coming up from the manure spreads. So it'll be real nice to have it all done. It is an eyesore having to go past this all the time. And like I said before, we had just come out of maple syrup season, and this is the in and out lane out of the woods so it just kept bothering me so last week basically was a thawing week and I knew that we could pull it all out get the tarps out that should have been rolled up and thrown away from the start do yourself a favor don't go buy billboard tarps and if you do get rid of them as soon as they serve their purpose I've always said in videos of the past um, when talking about our land is that we're just the temporary steward of the land and we want to improve it and make it better for generations to come. Uh, a pile of shingles is not going to do that. And the bad thing about this pile of shingles is it had these industrial grade staples that were really long and wiry. So the shingles came off um, in broken down pieces. It was barely holding onto the roof because of that. But there's still the first layer of shingles um, that was under that that had nails. So we're kind of going through this pile of dirt with a fine tooth comb and I just keep um, working on it, scraping it away and I just kept making the pile smaller and smaller, checking for nails. The good thing is the nails are all the little like one inch ones for your first layer for a new roofing job. But there were a few longer plywood nails too that are like 6D, 8D, 12D. Um, I think we basically have this all cleaned up now and if not for ourselves, it's for our kids and I had come up on a aerial like satellite photo of our farm and we were just kind of looking around it and seeing how it's changed since that photo was done and this mess showed up in that satellite photo. And I could not stand it. So this morning I just said, hey, let's go pick up some shingles. It's turned out to be a most of the day job. We had our coffee, we had toast. We've been out here working on bread and coffee all day long. It's probably three o'clock and the job is done. So hopefully this won't ever happen again. We have another roofing job to do this year and I guarantee it's not gonna end up back here. So with a little grooming, a little seed, this is gonna be all filled in within a couple of months and it'll never be seen again. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.